This week's video is brought to us by First Aid Kits, because sometimes you do stupid things. And, uh, you'll see, so, so do I. So the whole thing is made, it's finished. I came back now to make the introductory video, and so I can tell you, I'm going to be using tools that I've never used before in ways that I've never used before to make materials that I've never used before to make something I've never used before. There will be problems, there will be craziness, and oh my goodness, there will be blood right now. A few days earlier. So we have made it. We made it to a thousand subscribers. That absolutely messes with my head. I love it, I think it's crazy, but it is just the beginning. Um, I am flattered, I am humbled by this number. I think it's amazing that there's a thousand of you guys that say, hey, what this guy got, we wanna watch it. Um, that's cool. And I am also very, very, very thankful for the amount of people that gave me feedback about what to do for this video. And I've chosen to make a wooden play button, uh, but I wasn't just gonna go to the store and be like, oh look, it's a piece of wood I'm gonna cut and yeah. So we're gonna use this. This is a 20 inch tall, 16 inch wide log of maple that was given to me by my friend Aaron. And the plan, as it stands so far anyway, is to take that log and in some way break it down to usable lumber. Now, I have no idea how to do that, having never done it before, but we'll figure it out. And then take that lumber and use that to make the actual wooden play button. Now, I have none of the stuff I know I'm supposed to have, like a planer and a joiner for this, so that's gonna be huge issues, and I have never done this before, so I don't really even know where to begin. But I decided that a good idea might be to grab some of my heavier tools, stop staring at this log, and try to break it down at least into smaller pieces than it is now. So I take a look, figure things out in terms of what is usable lumber and where I believe we should be cutting, and then I just jump in with an ax and start cutting it down. What I finally get them down to are much more manageable. They're still about four and a half, maybe five inches thick and have a lot of ways to go, but it's much better than having a log. I thought that having a template or a stencil even would be a great, great, great help in terms of sizing and trying to figure things out as we went through this project. So I grabbed a picture of a play button from the internet and then dragged that into my Silhouette software. Silhouette is a paper cutting machine, which I'm sure I'll do many more videos on in the future. And then I traced that image, uh, cut it out in paper, and then had that to use throughout the rest of this project. Next up was trying to figure out how to remove the waste sections marked by X's here. And this is where the real problems came in. This was way too much for my little bandsaw, and that burned that out real quick. So I thought, hey, I'll just grab my sawzall, and that'll work really well. But that was also very incorrect. The blade kept seizing in the wood, it kept smoking like crazy, and I was starting to lose my cool. Frustration was definitely setting in hardcore at this point, so I decided to change directions completely, and instead of trying to get rid of the waste around the sides, I decided to bust out my chisels and try to flatten the other sides. And then I chiseled. And I chiseled. And I chiseled. And the hours went by. So a few things have become painfully clear. Uh, the first is that without the proper tools, without a joiner and a planer, this is way harder than I expected to take a log and make wood that you can use for something. Uh, I don't know why I thought it was gonna be really, really easy. That was stupid. <laughs> um, I am a little out of, out of my depth, I guess you'd say, uh, but I am chiseling. I am now on, um, what is that, about an hour and 20 minutes of chiseling, and I'm gonna keep going, because now I'm mad, so I'm gonna get it done. I don't have one side flat yet, let alone the other three, but we're gonna make it work. I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna make it work. So, where are we now? We're going to urgent care. <laughs> Why? I sliced my hand open with a chisel. You can now say I have put both blood and sweat into this project for the week. Uh, more to follow. I stopped bleeding, cleaned up all the blood in the house. Uh, there was a lot. I was a little surprised that a hand can bleed so much. Ah, hold on. There we go. And uh, more later. Want to see it? You want to see it? No stitches, but I got a lollipop. So they use these like cool little really, really sticky things. 
like kind of like tape to hold this the thing together, the cut. And uh, apparently that's gonna hold. So I got home and calmed down a little bit and decided that my miter saw, although it didn't give a very clean specific cut, might be a better idea than anything else. And as you can see here, I got some pretty clean sides, uh, but there is a lot of sanding still needed. And that's okay because I got a new toy, a belt disc sander that I've been fiending to use. The first order of business is taking off this old belt and replacing it with a Diablo 30 grit belt. 30 grit is super coarse and will remove a ton of material very quickly, but that's good in this case because we have a ton of material to remove. Although this is obviously a really rough sanding, as phase one of sandings go, this did quite a good job. You can see here just how much better it looks than it did before, although there is a long way to go. It's another day. So I slept on it, I gave it some thought, and we had a couple of issues we had to deal with. Ah, the S cup. Sabrina, my wife, it's her cup. The first thing we had to deal with is the fact that this piece of wood is huge. It's thick, it's heavy. I came up with an idea to do two things, which is to flatten out the last side, which is all wonky and wavy. I was gonna leave it, but we can do better. And to get rid of some of the mass of the piece. Uh, I think this should work, here we go. I took a one inch Fostner bit and put it into my drill press and then set the depth gauge in accordance with how thick I wanted the final product to be. That way, although this side I'm working on is not at all flat, by drilling down to a set depth, it'll flatten that piece out quite a bit. All right, that worked really well, a little surprised. Uh, while I was doing that, I had another idea. I was just gonna carve out the little triangle for the play, but since I'm trying things I've never done before, why don't we try to do an inlay of some kind? Um, I was thinking, and this is weird too, maybe I'll use brick. I have bricks in the backyard. Maybe I'll do a brick inlay. Let's see if I can. So I grabbed the stencil we made earlier, threw that onto the brick, and then used a Dremel attachment to cut the triangle out itself. Now this took a little while and a little finesse. I ended up breaking a couple in the process, but I ended up epoxying the last one back together and we used that for the final product. It looked really good. Before I can put the brick inlay in, I need to take some of the wood out. And to do this, it was actually really quite simple. All I did was use a router bit in my Dremel and I used a depth gauge that came with it. And I used the piece itself, the piece of brick, to set the depth of how much wood I would need to take out. And then I simply routed out the area that I wanted the brick inlay to go into. Now you'll see I do not route all the way up to the line, and that's because I'm gonna use chisels after this. Yes, but don't worry, I don't cut myself this time. I'm gonna use chisels to get myself the rest of the way up to that line to make sure it's a nice, sharp, crisp side. Although this was my first ever attempt at inlay, I wanted to make sure that I did it to the best of my ability. So I let myself edit many, many, many times both the piece of wood and the brick inlay itself. I wanted to make sure that the fit was exact as I could possibly get it. And this took a lot of time and a lot of patience, but I'm really proud with what I came out with. Before permanently adding the brick inlay, I made sure to hit the piece with both 120 and 220 grit sandpaper, just to make sure the whole thing was nice and smooth for the final product. To make the inlay permanent, I simply used some two-part epoxy, mixed it together really well, added some into the opening, and put the brick inlay in place. And as you can see, surprisingly, it fit just about perfect. I used a bunch of very generous coats of Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel to help protect this trophy. And while I know it's not by any means the most beautiful, most perfect thing out there, I'm not sure I can explain to all of you the sentimental value that this thing bears for me. The fact that we made it to a thousand subscribers in under a hundred days is absolutely beyond insane. That is not something that happens on YouTube very often at all. There are people who've been striving for years to get a thousand subscribers. So all I can say is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now take those four, multiply them by 250, and pass them out to the thousand of you guys. You guys rock, and this is all all because of you. Keep on rocking. 
I need another cup of coffee. I'm going to go make some more stuff. If you haven't subscribed yet, that would be nuts. Do so now. We'll see you guys soon.